Okay. Okay, what we have here is a measuring cup that's being filled up by water. Water is being filled through this through this brown hose that goes through this stopper and down to the bottom of this glass jug. It's a siphon, okay? Basically, the water pressure. Well, I don't know how to describe it. Just to say, if you don't know what a siphon is, that's a siphon. Okay. All right, now, unlike most siphons, now the thing about, now as you can see, the jug is much higher. So, if this were like any other siphon, the, um, the jug would just keep on filling it up until until this overflows and then and then the jug would empty itself because the hose is lower than the bottom of the uh, of the, uh, the 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 outlet of the hose is lower than the bottom of the of the jug. But this siphon's different because we have a second hose, okay? That second hose goes up here through the same stopper and then it terminates. It terminates, it comes right out, and there's a hole in the bottom of the stopper. Now watch what happens when that water level reaches the hose. It's creeping up, creeping up. That hose is about at the 800 millimeter, or milliliter mark, maybe a little lower. Creeps up, creeps up, and it slows. It stops. Nope, it's still slowing down. But eventually it stops, right before 800 milliliters. At the end of that hose. Now why is that? Why did the siphon stop itself? The reason is... The reason is because that's the air intake. This jug the only way that it can continue feeding water into the siphon is if it's taking in air. And the water level has stopped the air intake of that jug. So, what you have here is a self-regulating siphon. So let's say instead of a measuring cup you had like a bird bath or something and you wanted to keep it full, you know, while you're away on vacation. Well, what you do is you put a big barrel you know, you don't have to drill a hole in the bottom of it or anything. You just put a big barrel nearby, and um, you run two hoses of it. You got to stop up the the top. You have to make sure that the only the only inlet and outlet are these two hoses, one for the air and one for the siphon. And what happens is, once it gets to the level where that where your bird bath should be, what you do is you, that's where you put the end of the air hose, and it will never get past that air hose. The birds, as a matter of fact, can drink can drink all that can drink down, and it'll never get low enough. They could just keep pecking. Squirrels can come through and they can drink it. You know, the sun can evaporate it. And, uh, you know, provided you don't, uh, you don't leave your jug in the sun where it'll, it'll get heated up and cause problems. Maybe, uh, pressurize the stopper. Well, it probably won't pressurize the stopper. It'll just, it'll just push more water out is what it'll do. But, uh, no, it'll pressurize the stop stopper. Maybe. You know what? I don't know what it would do. Actually, if that air in there got really hot and started pressurizing, it'd probably, heck, I don't know, start blowing air through this hose, probably. That's probably what it'd do. Yeah. Yeah, it'd start blowing air through the, through the air hose. But then it starts sucking it up again, and yeah, it'd probably fix itself. So never mind. But anyway, that's how you create a self-regulating siphon with just two hoses. Now you know. Now I've never heard of this ever being done before, but then again, I'm no siphon scholar. I'm no physics major. This is probably something that's been done for thousands of years. Probably some famous 
famous philosopher came up with the self-regulating siphon. Now I'm just rediscovering it, unbeknownst to me, like an idiot who doesn't know anything about his history. Okay, thanks. That's all.